Why does a Christian marry a Mormon? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining us. Last time we got to meet Robert Lundgren, and today we get to meet his wife, Pam. Pamela. Which do you go by? Pamela. Pamela. Okay. So Pamela. Anyway, nice to have you here. And she is a Christian. And But I thought her story would be so interesting because of your interaction with this Mormon husband of yours. But be before we get to that, uh, where were you born and what's your background a little bit? Um, I was born in Orville, California. Okay. Is that north or south? Um, it's north. Okay. It's past Sacramento. North of Sacramento. Yeah. Okay. Small place. Yeah. So I grew up in a, um, a Southern Baptist background. Mom and dad were Southern Baptists? My dad attended church. Um, he was not saved. He did attend church and my mom was saved and my grandparents on both sides were saved. Now in a Christian vernacular, and I'm sorry to ask you this, but what does that mean that your dad went to church but he wasn't saved? He attended church. Um, he had no no idea that he needed Jesus to get to heaven. Oh, he, he thought just going to church yeah. was enough or something? And yeah. So he never professed Jesus? Or no, he never asked for forgiveness so of sins. So that's what you or, would say is not being. Yeah. Now you have hope. I, I don't know, if, is he still? He accepted Christ when I was 12. Oh. Well, and so he go. is saved now, but when I was growing up, you know, before I accepted Christ, he wasn't. Yeah. And I didn't know the difference until I myself accepted Christ. Okay. In Mormon thinking and terminology, we don't use those words. It just doesn't ever flow out of our mouth that we accept Jesus. It's just part of our, you know, we're members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Of course we accept Jesus, you know, or something, but it's just interesting. So did you live there long? Um, until I was five, and then we moved um, to Yuba City, California, which is not very far. Okay. And I lived there for quite a while. Yeah. Uh, into high school, you mean? And, mm -hmm. and, okay. And do you do youth activities? And did you go to to not what called primary, but to uh, children's programs and yes, young adult programs and that kind of stuff? Yes. Um, our church had Sunday school, and we had that in the morning for the before. youth too. Yeah, yeah. Sunday school, and then um, youth group. We had church camp. We had um, Awanas. There was many, many opportunities to fellowship with other, you know, yeah. kids and... And Bible studies, I guess, mm -hmm. and things. See, I think, not that Mormons aren't, don't think this, and I shouldn't say it this way, but I never really thought about it, but that Christians really do care about their kids and have youth programs and things that help teach kids and Bible studies and kind of things. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of opportunities for that. Yeah. I guess we just, I think Mormons think they have a corner on the family and that they're the ones that uh, do it best, I guess. I don't know. But So you go to high school and then what happens in life? Um, I went to a little bit of college and then my parents, um, my dad had an opportunity to transfer to Oregon with oh, his job and okay. they, um, I was... 18 years old and they asked if I would go with them and I said I would and so I gave notice at my job and I moved with them got a job right away at Kmart and um, this is starting to sound familiar here yeah <laughs> and uh, I went to work in the apparel department yeah. and I liked it and I was there for I don't know maybe a month or so when um, I met Robert yeah, tell us that story <laughs> you were telling us earlier about. So I um, was on break and I went um, to the, they used to have little kiosks that you could go and get like an ice cream. Yeah. And I went and got an ice cream and it was a pistachio ice cream. And I went and sat <laughs> in the break room and Robert also went to the kiosk, but I didn't know this because I was in the break room. <laughs> and he asked for a pistachio ice cream and the lady told him that, um, that there was only the last one was in the break room with me. Somebody already took it. <laughs> yeah, there was a girl in the break room that has your ice cream. And he came back 
into the break room and he jumped in the doorway and he said, who's got my pistachio ice cream? Was he just being fun? He was being funny oh, was in a being... deep voice. Yeah. And, but it scared me because I was the only one back there and it was kind of a little dungeon back there. Yeah. And so I was just going to take a lick and I stuck it in my eye. <laughs> and so that's Rather how we met. <laughs> memorable beginning. Yes. Huh? Now he, I think he yep. used the words love at first sight. Yep. Did you fall in love at that moment? I, you know, he's, he was so apologetic and um, I could not stop thinking about him. Really? I just, yep, I thought that um, maybe it was fate yeah, that I, we had met. Good guy. And, huh? Yeah. 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 Did you know right away he was Mormon? No, or I didn't. Not right away, but did you? No, I didn't know. Okay. I, um, we'd been, we went on a date um, and maybe a couple of dates yeah. before I, before I found out, out, yeah. Had you run into Mormons before? Um, I mean, in California, I guess yeah, there's a I, number I had, of them. And, I had, you know, had interaction with them before. So you knew a little bit? Yeah, or, a little bit. Yeah. Not a lot, but... Yeah. Did you feel pretty well grounded in your Christian walk and at this point? I did. Um, I went to a Christian school. Okay. So um, I was in um, from the sixth grade through twelfth grade. Mm. I was in... Um, a Calvary Chapel Christian School, oh. and I, I felt like I was pretty, uh, pretty well versed in the Word, and yeah. you know I'd been living, living for the Lord, and and yeah. so, I didn't feel threatened at all by his religion. <laughs> Did you think that he would try to convert you to Mormonism? Did you know about their proselyting efforts? And um, I really didn't. My mom did sort of. She was a little afraid that that, that uh, would happen. They're going to try and get you. Yeah. And I, but I, I didn't feel threatened about it. Um, it was actually the other way around. He was threatened by my, oh. by my, you know, <laughs> firmness, the way I stood my ground. Oh. And so I wasn't really threatened by it. You yeah. know, he offered um, a video for me to watch and, and I watched it and I, I wasn't interested. You remember which one it was? Or I don't remember. It really um, matter, but... I, I, I don't but remember anyway, it that yet. It didn't strike you at all. But. No. So, um, but he, he goes to church, to a Mormon church, the LDS church, and does he come home? I mean, he did mention that he tried to get you to listen to the missionaries, and what did you think of that? Um, we, I visited with the missionaries, yeah. and I think that it might have been a little bit... Um, hard on them. <laughs> I'm just going to say that you coming on the spot. <laughs> pretty straight out of a Christian school with a lot of, um, a lot of Bible verses and yeah. a lot of knowledge. And, um, I had a, you know, Bible verse for everything that I didn't agree with for them. What and were they so, sharing? Do you remember much about yeah, their they, message? They had a, um, a poster thing that they flipped the pages yeah. and they, they started with creation oh, they did. and, you know, wanted to share, um, I guess the foundation that, you know, they built the religion on is what I, I always thought it was. Yeah. Um, they talk about the Book of Mormon. They ask you to read the Book of Mormon. They, not the first visit. The first yeah. visit we went through this poster board thing. Okay. You know, and the, it was. Was pictures. that about Joseph Smith too? At all? It was. It did get there. Yes. The first vision. And... Mm -hmm. It started out with even the apple, and oh, then wow. it, it went all the way through. It took them two two visits to get through that. <laughs> and but so. But finally got to Joseph Smith and seeing God and Jesus. Yes. And, did that strike you uh, a little different? <laughs> yeah, I did not agree with that. Um, yeah. I was very adamant that that's not the same Jesus that I know. Yeah. The Jesus that I know, um, you know, was a very different Jesus. And, and then, you know, as we went through the studies, and I did this because I wanted to be, I wanted to be pleasing to my husband. Sure. I was not afraid of my um of caving in on my convictions. My right. convictions were strong. Yeah. And I didn't feel threatened at all. And I, I was willing to do this for him. And in hopes that he would also let me do this, do he would do the same for me sure. with my religion. And you invited him to church? Yes. And he went? Yeah, he yeah. went. He was not impressed at all. He, um, I can just feel the same thing. Probably uneasy about the cross on the wall and the music and the... Yeah. yeah, I could just feel and that it, w it would rise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I asked him, I said, did you feel the spirit? 
And he did not know what that was. He didn't know what the spirit was. i tell you was. what I felt, but it wasn't the spirit. <laughs> he said, I don't feel anything. <laughs> and, you know, it, our thought process is so judgmental, too. I mean, he's, he, he mentioned something about the pastor not having the priesthood. And uh, I'm sure there were just other things that run through his mind, would certainly run through mine about how this is just can't be God's true church and all those things. Yeah. So were you the one that brought the pastor over that evening? I am. You're the one to blame for that? I, <laughs> that and was I, your idea. I had trepidation about it because, you know, we'd had many conversations about, um, and this was a new town. So previously, the pastor of our previous church, my previous church, had visited um, several times. And oh. Robert had said, you know, I don't like this. I feel cornered. I don't want to talk oh. to God about him. Uh, with him, I know I know what I know, and that's all I need to know. Yeah. You know, and so now we're in a new town, and I've started a new church with my kids. I had two um, small children, and the pastor he just said we really want to come, come and have dinner with you guys, and I just thought you know this this is not going to be good, but I said yes. <laughs> Whose idea was it to go to the? Was it Target or whatever was across the street? We had Fred Myers across the street. Fred Myers, and they, that's they right. came in, and, and um, his wife asked me if I would walk over to Fred Myers with her, Leave the with boys the kids. Alone, huh? And um, I, as I walked out the door, I thought this could very well be the end of my marriage, because the look on his face was. You've cornered me again. Yeah, and and you did this, yeah. and I ask you not to. <laughs> and so, but I I went because, I you know felt like. How long was this whole process? Is this several years? I mean, you got married, and, and how far into the marriage was Seven the, years. Seven, it was seven years, okay. Yes. So you're anxious over at Fred Meyer the whole time, yeah. and what happens when you get home? I, um, I walked in with my kids, and he stood up and he said, Babe, I accepted Christ as my Savior. And I thought all of the prayer and everything that I laid at God's feet had come back to be answered. Wow. Because we have such love for people, don't we? we? We just want them to have that same message that we've got, that what Jesus had done for us. Yeah. Did, had he started reading the Bible at all then, your Bible? I had a, yeah, I had a Bible and I... I I would notice in the mornings when I would get up, um, he left to work really early, and I would get up and um, my Bible would be open, and I always closed it at night when I went to bed, and he was reading the New he Testament. Take some, some, he's been checking things out or something. Yeah. <laughs> he was reading the New Testament, and um, I would sit down and read what he had re hopefully, you know, you know, the page that the, whatever was, was open, open, where yeah. it was open, and I would just pray on that, and I would just give it to God, and I would say... You know, he's searching. I know he's searching. And you can, you know, you can call his heart and, and bring him home. Did you sense a turmoil in him uh, before the pastor experience? But did you sense that he was, he felt like he needed to be more active in Mormonism or that he needed to find God? Or was there, was he reading and studying that kind of stuff? And He was, and... We had many conversations about about Jesus, and you know he didn't know Jesus. And he, I know, I know. I mean, he go he went to seminary, <laughs> he went to church, and yet he didn't know Jesus. Yeah, he didn't know Jesus, and certainly didn't understand grace. Didn't understand. No. Yeah. And I would tell him, you know, you have to understand that if you don't accept Christ as your Savior, then there's only one other alternative to heaven, and that's hell. And he did not like that no. at all. And he no, would my tell family me, I didn't like that one either. No, he didn't like that, and he would get upset about it, and he'd tell me, I know in my heart this is the one true church. Yeah. And I would ask him, what, what is it about this church that's so true? What, you know, can you tell me, can you pinpoint what your conviction is, because I had conviction and I could, I could totally lay out my conviction, <laughs> but he couldn't do it. He couldn't, he didn't have, all his answer was always the same. I know in my heart, this is the one true church. I feel, I feel, yeah. 
we we rely on that feeling and a lot in Mormonism. Yeah. So uh, you must have been just thrilled that night coming home and. I was. Seeing him. I I felt like sometimes you know it was a long seven years and sometimes when you're praying for something and you don't see the fruit of that prayer and you've put it in God's hands and you've taken it back and you've put it in God's hands <laughs> and you've taken it back. Yeah. That you can it can be discouraging. Sure. You know it wasn't always the you know sweetest of the seven years it was yeah. we had rough patches and that night i just felt like everything that i had laid at god's feet that he had just fulfilled every promise to me that i'd prayed yeah well to to turn our hearts over i'm really proud of him for that courage because it that's not easy and to uh, well I mean, I hate to say it this way, but admit that your wife's right. Uh, admit that you've been wrong. Those those things take a real man to yeah. to admit those things. I don't know what would have happened if my wife had come to me with this message of of Jesus. I mean, it, I think it, God did it the right way for me. I was able to share with her, but I'm not sure my pride and my uh, faith in the Mormon church wouldn't have kept me from following along or doing the right thing. So I'm really proud of him. <laughs> you must have been real thrilled too. Yeah. So what happened? Did you go to church the very next Sunday kind of thing? And <laughs> We did it. We went the next day and um, he went forward, the pastor, and it, ironically it was the pastor's birthday the day that Robert accepted Christ with him. The one that came to the house? Mm -hmm. It was his it birthday. It was his birthday and so... A nice little and, present there. Yeah. <laughs> he got up and, and the next day was Sunday and he got up in church and he said it, that he had had the most blessed birthday ever and he shared with the church that Robert had came to Christ and um, we were Boy. able to go forward as a family yeah. we had never dedicated our children we didn't have any um, we'd had seven years of, of walking just like this yeah. and then suddenly we were like this Wow! walking together we had the same just all of a sudden we had the same desires and goals and, and unity because yeah. we didn't have that before. Not equally yoked before. No. Huh? And so we were able to go to church, and um, we went forward, and we dedicated our children. We'd never been able to do that before. How old before. were the kids at this point? Drew was seven, and Kara was three. Oh. So did they have a concept of what Dad had done and what what was going on, do you think? I don't, Maybe the seven I don't think Kara bit. did so yeah. much, um, but Drew did yeah. because he knew that he knew he and we've talked about this. He knew something had changed <laughs> because Robert didn't go to church with us for one thing, and it it oh. you know it was very. Um, I went to church with the children, right. and then you know Robert went to his church, and so he knew that there was a difference um, in the fact that we had you know got up Sunday morning and all went to church, and and then <laughs> when we, something's different here. <laughs> yeah, when we dedicated them to the Lord, and then. Now, how um, to explain that just a little bit? I don't know. I know babies get blessed. What does dedicate to the Lord mean? Well, how does that? It's happen? just a. It's just a. Um, a promise that you make that you'll raise your kids, in and teach them and, and teach and them and keep them and, in the Bible yep, and stuff. Okay. To train them up the way they should go. And then and they won't depart from it. That's right. That was my life's first when I raised my kids. <laughs> um, and it's you know the pastor prays and it's. It's just there isn't a baptism or anything no, like no. that. It's just a yeah. a promise that we made as a couple. Yeah. And usually those promises are made when your kids are little. But you know, Drew was seven. Sure. And we had not done that yet. Yeah. So speaking of baptism, which uh, we might as a Christian, that's one thing that's different. You don't <laughs> baptize at age eight, particularly, right? We baptize, or you'll you allow them to b baptize when they're when they come to Christ. Yes. Right? I always, even as a Mormon, I thought, well, eight years old, we're really just getting them into the church, making sure their names are on the rolls. It has nothing to do with Jesus. And I always thought that even as a Mormon. I, I don't think it was a... Well, I'm sure others think that same thing, too. But it, it wasn't that they were accepting Jesus. They were becoming a member of the church. That's what we always said. Oh, you're going to get baptized and be a member of the church. It wasn't, you're going to be baptized and come to Christ. <laughs> Yeah. As a Mormon, we just don't say those things, and so uh, so your children 
eventually get baptized, do they? And um, that same year, Robert got baptized. Um, Did he? In a horse trough. That's all we had. We had another church, horse trough story. Yeah, well, we, was, our uh, church was small, and that's what we had. Oh. And he was baptized in a horse trough in about two months. And then um, a few months later, Drew accepted Christ as his Savior. And he was um, eight. Okay. And then he was baptized in a swimming pool because <laughs> it was summertime. And they said, well, you know, let's we'll go to this. A little more room. Yeah, huh? go and do it in the pool. And then when Kara was four, um, I found her with the family Bible open. And she was just sobbing, just sobbing her little heart out. Really? And I said, honey, what's the matter? And she said, I want Jesus. She said, everybody's going to heaven but me, and I want Jesus. Oh. She was four. That was tender, huh? Yeah. So she was baptized. We met her, she, um, and she has a little baby. Yeah, and, she's, we have a little grandson with her. Oh, she's a sweetie. And Drew has two children. We have two grandchildren. Oh, good for you. With him and his wife, Kami. The precious kids. Well, I love your analogy about walking separately and then all of a sudden being able to walk together. But in Jesus, so different. Not in the church, you know, not... Uh, life would have been different if you'd have listened to them missionaries less uh, of their discussion, you know, and and uh, you'd have had this mountain of prophets and bishops and stake presidents in, be in between you and, and Jesus, and that just isn't the way it is, is it? No. Yeah. All you need is Jesus. Yeah. It is all you need. Now, have you uh, been, uh, um, of course, raising your children, but have you been involved in other activities with... Uh, in your Christian walk, and I have. Um, we Robert's job moved us every four years, so we've been to a few churches. Yeah, we've been that. married thirty-two <laughs> years. So have you really mm -hmm. that long? Yep, we've been married. Well, it really years. lasted then that yep. long. <laughs> Love at first sight business, yep. huh? Yeah. It was serious. And so you know, in each church, we've had different th different things that the Lord's called us to do, or that we've been asked to do, yeah. and that we've accepted. Um, I have. Um, been the leader of the women's ministry. Oh. I've uh, directed VBS. Um, I've and been and a youth that's VBS, what's that? Vacation for? Bible School for Children. Okay. Where we provide a week of, of um, Bible study learning activities. And and the, the goal for that is that they will learn about Jesus and accept him as their savior. And yeah. many kids come to the Lord during that week. Uh, really? Yeah. And what's the age on that? Is it 10 um, or teenagers? to 14 is what we did in okay. this church this summer. Oh, okay. Churches, they choose their Each own one. age, oh, okay. whatever they can handle, how many teachers you have, they you know, because you have to segregate. Vacation Bible study. Mm -hmm. well, and so you. I've led the youth, um, and I, I kind of, as my kids grew, I, I also grew, you know, because I wanted to be involved in what they were doing. Yeah. So when they were little, you know, we did Vacation Bible School. When they got older, then I, I started with the youth. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, not, but not to earn your way to, to salvation, right? Or no. But, earn points with God. But, but in obedience. Yeah. Obedience to, you know, his word that says to, to lead people to him. All of those activities aren't for me to get to heaven, but to lead other people to the Lord. Yeah. Have you you've obviously run into other Mormons here in the valley and, or whatever? You call this a valley? This area? Of, mm -hmm. Do you? Uh, do you share with them, or are you able to? Uh, do you try to minister to them at all? I do. And, yeah. I, I'm actually ministering to, to a lady right now that's um, LDS. And is she and, questioning and um, thinking? And... She is questioning and she's thinking, and I did have um, an opportunity to go through the sinner's prayer with her last week. Wow. And she accepted Christ as her Savior. Oh, what a great blessing that yeah. is. Well, I think one of the worst things that Mormons can do is start reading the Bible, you know, and really trusting the Word of God. Um, it just, it's funny how, how the Word just penetrates their hearts if they'll read it. But they don't, they don't really have much regard for the Bible, not translated correctly, you know. Yeah. And they have the Book of Mormon, and that's all they think they need, I guess. So. Yeah. Well, you know, and you don't have any other family that are Mormon. No. Or it was just all, okay. Yeah. But do you have anything you want? We're almost out of time, actually. Do you want to say anything to family or friends or? 
Um, Maybe to Robert's family or something. I would just say that if if you're unsure and you have questions, you know, this is something that the lady that I've just talked to, she had questions, but she had nobody to talk to. She had nobody to ask. Right, because no one, she doesn't want to ask her bishop some of these. And she doesn't very, want anybody to know that she's questioning the church. Yeah. Open your Bible. Read the New Testament. Yeah. Ask God to open your heart and to give you the truth. Yeah. What kind of questions did she have, by the way? Um, what she was had her biggest questions. Concerns? One of the biggest ones was about um, being baptized into the church and baptism will get you to heaven. And she, she wanted to know about, you know, if somebody in Ethiopia had never heard, <laughs> you know, the word and if they um, hadn't been baptized, would they, would they be able to go to heaven or, you know, would they go to hell? Yeah. And things like that. Interesting. You're able to provide her some good answers. Yeah. That. Well, Pamela, thanks so much for Thank sharing you. your story. That's been unique to our audience here and uh, our normal audience, I guess. To, but we do have a lot of, uh, hopefully, a lot of Mormons that are searching and questioning, and maybe this is a place they can listen to and get some hope from the things you've said. So thanks for sharing. Thank you. And we'll see you next time here on the Ex-Mormon Files.